Hello everyone, we will continue the topic persistence class and in the previous videos, we finished with insert database operation, we finished with delete database operation. Now we will move on to update database operation and yes, we can update the values of existing records of the database table. If the record is not existing, we cannot update that particular record. If I will go to our order header table, if I will go to the contents of the table, if I'm executing, you can see we can only only change the non key fields. I cannot change the order number. For a particular order number, I can update order date, payment mode, total amount and currency because we can never, never change the primary key. Because suppose if I join some organization for whole career, my employee ID will never, never update. I cannot change my employee ID. Other things can update. So we can only, only update the non-key fields. Suppose if I will go for the program, this is our program. So if we are putting some order number, we can change the order date, payment amount, to payment mode, total amount and currency for that particular order number. And yes, same to same assumption. At a time, we are updating one single order number. We inserted single order number at a time. We did a single order number at a time. Now we will go for updation of also single order number. As we have parameters, yes, so we can only pass single input at a time. Now, same to same process. Firstly, we need to validate the input. Then we will simply, simply update the order date, payment mode, total amount and currency if the input is correctly validated, if our input is correct. Now, what we will do, we all know that we can go for validation part as a part of add selection screen event. Just think, validation is same to same which we did as a part of delete also. If the order number is existing, yes, we can update the details of that order number. If the order number is not existing, we need to give a error that whatever the input you are passing, it is incorrect. Same thing we did in delete also. If the order number is existing. We can only delete that order number. If the order number is not existing, how I can delete that particular order number? And you all know we are using the method get underscore persistent. If I'm passing right order number, I will get the result. If I'm getting the result, yes, it means input is correct. If I'm passing a wrong order number, hello underscore object will not create. Nothing will be in the result. So I will simply, simply give the error message. So from the validation perspective, everything is same. So what I will do, I will simply copy the logic. Because same to same validation, we need to do for now date. Now I will put here P underscore R2 is equal to capital X. And why I am putting P underscore R2? Because the radio button for the update is P underscore R2. Okay, we'll see where this P underscore R3 is getting finished. Okay. We have this, okay, we'll finish this delete here. It is finished. Now this is our update. Okay, this is finished. So if I will check all three are stand alone or not, 
This is our insert that good. This is our okay delete, and this is our update. Now I will check the syntax, and we will see in the debugging mode. Then we will proceed further. Suppose I am putting a breakpoint. I am right. I am giving a order number which is in the table and by default update radio button is ticked. Whenever I will perform some action or click on to execute button, firstly add selection screen event will trigger. Now the second radio button capital X and I am as a part of add selection screen event. You can see we got the object. We have the object of CA class. We are only only passing it to LO underscore agent. Now we have the object of agent class. We are passing the order number, right order number. So I will get the object of CL class. If I will do F6. You can see the object of CL class created. It means this if condition is false and we will simply simply go for yes, the input is correct. Suppose I am going for a order number which is not in the table. I will go to execute. I will go to desktop 3 most preferable desktop. Now we are clearing the previous instances. Now we have the object of the agent class. Now we are passing a order number which is not in the table. So we will not get the result or we will not get the object of CL class. And you can see the object is initial and we are getting the error that please pass the right order number. Order number is not correct. This is the part which we covered as a part of delete also. Now the next important thing, this is always the case. Whenever we will put order number, these all details should appear here so that user can understand that for this order number, these are the various things and after that user can update those things. So our next question is how, how we can pass the existing order date, existing payment mode, total amount and currency. Suppose I am putting order number one and user is putting enter suppose. If user is putting enter or if user is going for some action, we need to fill order date, payment mode, total amount and currency. If the order number is correct, after that user will change and whenever user will click on to execute, those details will be updated into database table. Now the next question comes, how, how we can go for this? One option, you know, you can write a query based upon that order number. And you can fill order num, order date, payment mode, total amount and currency. If I will show you that table, whatever the input user passed, you can write a query and you can fill order date, payment mode, total amount and currency. This part I already explained in a back programming playlist. As of now, we are covering classes. So we will all be learn with the help of class methods only. You can use query, that's not a problem. But if we are covering a back oops, if we are covering classes, so it is good. We will do everything with the help of classes only. Now, very, very easy. If anyways, you are, if you are passing a right order number, you are getting the object of CL class. If I will go to CL class, very easy. And I explained at the initial level itself. When we did this, I will go for CL class. 
this is our CL class. And you can see in the CL class, we have the getter and setter methods. Now we need to get, we are not setting. We will set whenever we want to update. As of now, we are getting the existing values of the order number. So I will simply use these four methods. So if I will go for get underscore order date, it will give me the order date of that particular order number. If I will go to payment mode, it will give this. If I will go for total amount, this. If I will go for currency, it will give me this. It is very, very easy with the help of classes. Yes. So what we will do, we will simply, simply call these four methods. And you all know these four are your instance method. It means the object is compulsory. And yes, whenever the object will create, we will simply, simply call the get methods. Now what we will do, we will call the get methods. Now, if your input is not correct, it will give the error message. If the input is correct, we will get a object. So I will simply, simply write a else part. Else part means LO underscore object is not initial. If you are confused in writing a else part, no problem. You can write like this also. If LO underscore object is not initial, then we will simply, simply call the getter methods. If we are passing a right order number, we will get a object. If we have the object of CL class, can I call the methods? Yes, I can call. I will go to pattern button. I will go to a map object patterns. Now, what is our instance of CL class? LO underscore object. And this is our CL class. Firstly, we will call the method get underscore order date. Okay. Never forget to read and comment the try and catch block. Now it is in the result. It will give me the order date. So I will write LV underscore order I will declare this. You can simply check. What will be the type of this LV underscore O date? It will be same as that of result. If you double click and check the type of result, have you seen result is type? This is our data element of order date. We are always declaring the variables like this only. So I will simply write data LV underscore O date. Type data element of order date. Same way, I will go for payment mode, total amount and currency. I will now go for this, write this logic between this if condition only. Yes, because if object is not created, I cannot call the methods. Otherwise, you will get a runtime error. I will go to pattern, a bad object patterns. Now we will call the method get underscore payment. I will go for OK. Now in the result, I will declare a variable for payment mode. If I will double click and check. Result is of this type and you will see this is the data element of payment mode. So I will declare this variable now. Data LV underscore payment mode type this. So it's duplicate. Now I will call total amount and currency. 
pattern, a bad object patterns. Now I will call get underscore total amount. Now here I will write LV underscore TA. If I will check that type, you will on all know it will give us the result is of which is of type data element of total M. Now we will go for currency pattern a bad object patterns. Now I will go for currency. Here I will write LV underscore CURR. And I will declare LV underscore CURR. And we all know it will be data element of currency. I will check the syntax up to this level and I will activate. So what is the summary of this video up to this level? In this video, we started with update database operation. Firstly, we are going for validation part. Same to say, if you are putting a right order number, get underscore persistent method will give the result if you have the result if you have the result we will update if you do not have the result we are giving the error message now the next question is whenever user will give the right order number we need to populate these things so that user can see that these are the existing values and if user want to change user can change those things one option, you can write a query. But if we are doing everything through classes, then we should use classes. So in our CL class, we have the getter methods. And now we have the values in these particular variables. In the next video, we will bind these variables values with the screen fields. And then we will go for update. So that's it in this particular video. Thank you.